climate change is one of the strongest variables that we at Joshua Tree National Park are worried about. As temperatures continue to rise, there's big concerns about how that is going to affect not just the iconic Joshua Tree of the park, but all the ecosystems. This plant is providing kind of like a, a nursery for the seeds of these flowers that have bloomed. So when you're thinking about Joshua Tree National Park and you're thinking about, um, you know, will Joshua trees disappear uh, due to climate change? You know, will, will, will their range shrink? Um, don't think about just Joshua trees because this, this is a highly diverse place. Here we go. We have uh, a number of Earthwatch volunteers that are out here helping us collect baseline data on the flora and fauna of Joshua Tree National Park uh, in a variety of locations around the park so that we can begin uh, tracking the effects of climate change on the, on the species of the park. And this is our vegetation crew of citizen scientists. What we're doing is getting a snapshot in time with uh, the vegetation out here. So this is a long-term climate change monitoring project. And I will indicate... It has more than measured up to what I was hoping for. I had never seen a citizen science project that wanted such detailed information. And I think that's the big plus for this Earthwatch program is to delve into the real, de real details of the uh, living organisms out here, both the plants and animals. It gives us the opportunity to go with concrete facts. It does show them as opposite in the photograph. Yeah. And you realize that maybe there is a, a role for everyone to play in trying to uh, promote conservation. I, I think I want to make a contribution, and uh, it's, it's fun on top of it. Um, and at the end of the day, you can look back and see what you've done. Having the citizen scientists out here helping us to collect this data uh, enables us to have this long-term sustainable program to look at how climate change is going to impact our park. Many people who have never been to the desert before uh, have this idea that it is kind of like a, a, a barren wasteland. And if you look around here, countless species of, uh, of wildflowers. The night skies are just amazing here. Seeing the Milky Way so clearly and taking walks at, in full moons at night and not needing a flashlight because the shadows are more crisp than they are even here today. The light is just an amazing. It's a, a really an appreciation that I have in, in the desert with the open skies that I never anticipated coming here. I find it uh, just sublime, awe-inspiring, uh, complete stillness. You're basically uh, thinking about your place in the world. That magic that clicks when they realize how special it is and why we should protect it. Why not to damage it? Why not to put graffiti on it? How to keep it special for everybody. For many years, I came to uh, Joshua Tree to climb with my friends. And uh, now in my old age, I don't rock climb anymore, but now I paint because the desert keeps drawing me back. When we have a place that we can admire for what it is, what nature always has been, then we can appreciate the life we lead in the big city and uh, help maintain an environment that is healthy for everybody. I don't know what I would do if I didn't know how to paint the desert. I think I would just come here and hang out. This is a, this is a welcome sight at Black Rock because, well, for one, because they're pretty, but these desert dandelions are the favorite food of our, our most famous animal in the park, which is a desert tortoise. And we have several desert tortoises that live in this area in Black Rock, and this is the kind of thing that will bring them out of their burrow. So here is one of our new young Joshua trees that is coming up, and when I say young, it's kind of relative. This one is probably several years old. It's probably uh, related to the rootstock of this one sitting here next to us, this older one. So it's exciting. We always like seeing new young Joshua trees. 
the National Park Service interpreters at Joshua Tree are kind of on the on the front lines as far as communicating climate change. So we just have a very a very unique opportunity. How do we keep that iconic species and the desert for a great experience, not just for visitors now, but for future generations as well? Why did you go to the Joy Cactus Garden?